Well, I want to welcome you to our program today. We have a very special guest. His name is Bob Rolvis. He's from Epworth, Iowa. And so, Bob, thank you so much for being on yeah. our program today. Glad to be here. And, one of the, and the main thing that we're going to be talking about today would be uh, miracles, you know, that happen to us. And, you know, specifically, you know, healing miracles, but then also situational miracles, if we would want to call it that. Well, first of all, I should introduce uh, Bob as being a farmer. Uh, and you farm, you, well, you don't farm right in the middle of Epworth, do you? No, I mean, the so, farm is right on the north edge of Epworth. Yeah, Yeah. so it's right on yeah. the edge there. Yeah. So. The buildings are in the city limits. And, oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. so you kind of have the best of both worlds. You're in the community, but then you're also out in the country. Then, So depending yeah. upon if you want to be a, a city boy or a farm boy, you kind of got it both. Yeah. You? yeah, you have to contend with both, too, because I have two separate farms, and sometimes they'll haul manure from one to the other, and you don't want to be dropping it on the street, or people don't like that, so. Well, so you actually go right through town with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, they know when you're, when you're coming, you, leave, <laughs> you have a presence, and don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm traveling the... <laughs> Everybody knows Bob. Here yeah, he comes. Yeah, well, yeah. very good. Well, how long have you been farming? Uh, well, since 1972, so. 1972. Yeah, over 40 years, yeah. Yeah. Well, 1972, I, maybe that dates me, but it um, doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but I guess now when you mention 40, you know, 40 some years, I mean, that's, uh, it starts to add up. Okay? Yeah, but it yeah. seems like it goes by fast, but yeah. well, Being farming, I asked you, do you like being a farmer? But yet I know that the farming can be one of those jobs that can be dangerous and, and, and at long hours and oftentimes very hard work, but yeah. what would you say? Well, you don't farm unless you love it. Okay. You know, you got to love it. Uh, I knew when I was in seventh grade that that's what I wanted to do. It was in your blood? Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Did you grow up on a farm? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that farm Dad bought in 47 before I was born. So, so you're a second generation on the farm? Then. On this farm, yeah. I'm actually about the fifth or sixth generation farmer in Dubuque County. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so your family then has got some deep roots oh, in, yeah. in the area. Oh, yeah, back from the 1850s, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what kind of farming do you do? Uh, mostly run beef cows, uh, okay. calve them out and finish out the calves. Mm -hmm. Used to raise a lot of hogs, but we got out of that back in 2010. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's nothing like good old Iowa uh, beef and pork, I'll tell you what, it's, yeah. it's really something. Okay, well, have you been a Christian all of your life, or how would you explain? Yeah, your, your um, I was raised in a very strong Catholic family. Okay. Uh, had an uncle who was a priest and two great aunts who were nuns. Um, didn't really know them very well. My uncle, who was a priest, passed away when I was only about five or six years old. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, very strong faith. Went to eight grades of Catholic grade school. Okay. Right, right there in Epworth, St. Patrick's. Um, and I think I always had a strong belief in God and wanted to please Him. But I was always searching, looking for more answers because I saw a lot of things in the faith that didn't jive. Okay. You know? uh, when I received my first communion back in 1958, they told us that you're saved by going to church every Sunday, going to confession, and doing all these works. You know. Mm -hmm. But then I'd see people sleeping in the back pew, and it just didn't jive. So I was always asking questions, always looking for truth. Mm -hmm. um, and so. When I started uh, dating my wife, she was raised Methodist. All right. And so during our dates, we uh, we uh, talked an awful lot about faith, you know, because I think that's a, that's the basis where mm -hmm. you make all your decisions through life is really is on your faith. Yeah, it's your faith, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. your mm -hmm. feelings about God. So we we talked about that a lot, and before we got married, we decided that uh, we would uh, we didn't know which church we were going to, you know. Uh, but we decided we were going to find a church that we could both go to because I, we just didn't like the idea, one going to one church, one going to the other church. So um, after we got married, we uh, looked around and we found a Presbyterian church here in Dubuque and went there for 10 years. Okay. There was a young pastor there who was really bringing the word, bringing a lot of truth that we hadn't heard before. So we stayed there 10 years and then we went out to Epworth, there's a Methodist church right in Epworth, only a few blocks from the farm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went there for the next 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Thought, thought we'd be there for life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But uh, I joined a group that puts on the Living Last Supper. Okay. I don't know if you've heard that or not. We, we do that every spring and around Easter. Like a Seder meal? It's, it's like that. It's a, all, the, all the apostles stand up and, and give a little history about each one. And it's, it's about an hour and a half performance. Okay. Well, We've that's... been doing that for 17, 18 years now. And right. actually, it actually got started in that Methodist church in Epworth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and when I joined that, I learned a few more things, you know. Mm -hmm. And they always have a book study every year. And one of the books we read was just a little book called A Life God Rewards by, by Bruce Wilkinson. Okay. And I read that book, and it talked about, well, it proved it. There's just scripture after scripture after scripture that heaven is not going to be the same for all of us depending on on what we do with our life okay heaven is going to be different there's a quote in there by john wesley who's the founder of the methodist church and he said there's an inconceivable amount of difference in the rewards of heaven and so i went to the methodist, pa methodist pastor and i showed her that book and i says here you know why, why aren't we preaching this why aren't we teaching this and she said even if I believed that, I wouldn't teach it. Well, there was all kinds of quotes in there from all different pastors, you know, uh, David Jeremiah and, and Charles West, or uh, yeah, John Wesley and uh, Charles Stanley. All those, you know, mm -hmm. were talking about this that there are different rewards in heaven. Oh, okay. And I thought, well, if she's not going to preach that, I'm going to go someplace. There it is, you know. Let's preach the truth because mm -hmm. it was. It was clear for all the scriptures in that book that that was biblical. That was the truth. And that's a book by Bruce? Bruce Wilkinson. Wilkers, Wilkinson. Yeah. yeah, just a little bitty book. That didn't take you two mm -hmm. hours to read it. Okay, but that had a, uh, an influence in your life, and it was kind of a turning point in your faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it sounds like you've had you know, quite a journey of your faith, oh, I mean, yeah. growing up Catholic and then being in a Methodist church and a Presbyterian church and then yeah. but sometimes yeah you can read a book and yeah. and and how that how it's written and it's based on biblical principles and well anyway but that had an influence on your faith journey then yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah like I say I was always looking for truth you know mm -hmm. no matter what cl church I was going to I was going to Bible classes you know and and different studies you know just trying to find the truth mm-hmm um, okay so yeah. So now in your yeah. So now today, you know, being a, a Christian, God living and being active in your your life, and imagine uh, as a farmer, as that sun rises in the morning and as it sets in the evening, and and as you're out there working, you know, in God's creation, I imagine you can just a lot of those parables must just really come to life then, especially you know the farmer that goes out to sow and and uh, the seeds that grow and eventually produce um, fruit, you know, yeah. I, I, I can just see yeah. where every day, you know, every day's got to be, you know, really quite a miraculous experience in relationship to the truth that God has given to us as a farmer. Yeah, yeah, you see God at work, you know, like a, a newborn calf, you know, within an hour, mm -hmm. it's, it's up on its feet and it's found its mother and it's sucking. Mm -hmm. and it's just, it's, you know, just a miracle, yeah. you know, and... Mm -hmm. You think, how can people not see God in this world? But mm -hmm. some, you know, we're teaching evolution like there is no creator. But, you know, when you're out in the farm and you see all this stuff, you know mm -hmm. it had to be created. It's like a veil that needs to be lifted, right? Yeah. To be able to, you know, but to be able to see the miracle of God's creation unfolding every day in your life mm -hmm. as you are looking at all the different, whether it's a calf that is born or to be able to put the harvest into the granary, so to speak. Yeah. You know, so when we talk about miracles, and hopefully we can just see the miracle of life every day in creation that, well, there's no way that creation could have ever happened without God. You know, so that's really, you know, so all of creation is God's uh, thumbprint, so to speak, or footprint or whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. his creative print. Yeah. And, but then, you know, so we kind of now look at, you know, creation as being, you know, the natural that God has created, that God has created order in, in our world and in life. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the laws yeah. that have been, yeah. so that we can know, you know, that the sun is going to rise in the morning and this time of the year it's cold, 
we always know that when but then in the middle of summer in July we can count on it being warmer so we always kind of have that sense of when it's time to plant and when it's time to harvest so to speak you know, mm -hmm. all these natural laws and we don't plant our seeds in the middle of January okay so we have the natural that we thankful that God you know has it for us but you know the supernatural you know to be able to say that you know that well God is you know that God who was created the natural in a miraculous way now is working in at times in a in a supernatural way, almost, you know, I don't know, suspending the natural or doing something that is out of the natural in order to do what we would call today a miracle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. so, you know, we can read about miracles, we can hear the testimony of other people that are talking about miracles, but, but you're here today to say that you can, you know, aside from everything, to say, well, I... No miracles happen because I am living proof of that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, about the time I was deciding, you know, that I needed to to uh, leave the Methodist Church, looking for more truth, I met Johnny Randall. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. he started talking about the supernatural, you know, healing and stuff. And I guess I was right away. I was open to it. Mm -hmm. Just looking for truth, I was open to it. And I guess one of the first times I met him, I was complaining because my shoulder was hurting. Um, the tractor that I use every day for choring, uh, when I put a loader on it, I end up taking a couple of the steps off of it. So instead of having three steps to get up to the tractor, I now had just two. And by jumping on the tractor, you know, when I was 30 years old, I could pull myself up there and no problem. But after 25 years of doing that, this shoulder was starting to rebel. Mm -hmm. And I got, it really, I got to the point where I had to take this hand and put this up on the fender so I could pull myself up in the tractor. Oh, wow. That's, that's where I was at. And I was talking to Johnny, and he says, well, you can be healed by faith. And at the time, I didn't know the Bible like I know it now, but I did know one thing. From, from early on, I knew I was forgiven. I knew I was a child of God, and I was forgiven. And I found the verse in, in Psalm 103, verse 3, it says, right there, you are forgiven. God has forgiven all your iniquities, mm -hmm. and he has healed all your diseases. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I know I'm forgiven. So Johnny just says, you know, he tell me, you know, just say that out loud to the devil. You know, the devil is, uh, he puts his stuff on us. It's in... Uh, in Acts 10, 38, you know, uh, it says that Jesus performed healing on those who were oppressed by the devil. Yeah. You know, so, so sickness and disease are an oppression of the devil. And he says, we have authority over that. And so I just started saying that. I know I'm forgiven and I know I'm healed. And I guess as a, I did that for three or four days in a row. And as I did that, my faith just built up. And I finally got to the point, I remember one morning I was out in the barn, and I just shouted it out to the devil. I am forgiven, and I know I'm healed. Mm -hmm. And that afternoon, right after that, I felt a warmth way down in my joint here. It was all afternoon, like there was a, like a little heat lamp in there or something. And I knew I was getting my healing. It just felt great all afternoon. Wow. And it's been perfect ever since. Isn't that amazing? It's like so you can jump up in a tractor without having to... Well, after that, I put some more steps on the tractor. But, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like I got a brand new shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so you mentioned, okay, Acts 10, 38. Yeah. Yeah, that, that you know, as far as sickness is an oppression of the devil, mm -hmm. you know, the devil... Well, the devil does all kinds of things, but oh, yeah. that's one of the things is to bring sickness. And but to say that I uh, that I'm forgiven, as you talked about Psalm 103 verse 3, mm -hmm. and that He heals us from all of our afflictions, and so in all of our diseases. It's, yep. Okay, yep. so we so there. So you're asking for forgiveness, so that you are forgiven that you are freed but then that bondage is broken to where you experienced healing then as well mm -hmm. isn't yeah. that something yeah mm -hmm. yeah i had the faith you know that jesus died for my sins i knew 
I was forgiven. Mm -hmm. And I got to where I believe that book, and I said, it's right on the same verse there. Mm -hmm. He has healed all your, you know, mm -hmm. forgiven all your iniquities and healed all your diseases. So, boy, I, if I'm forgiven, I'm healed. Yeah. And I, I guess my faith rose up enough that I got my miracle. And when you think about uh, Psalm 103, you know, that's really a psalm of great inspiration. I, uh -huh. I know I like to read <clears throat> Psalm 103. It, it just from, well, here again, all, it seems like all of the Word of God and the Scripture, but, but that one, you know, as we talk uh -huh. about that today, yeah. I mean, those are some very precious words and affirming words and words of truth. Like you're yeah. saying, you're, you're, you're looking for truth and you're finding the truth uh -huh. in, in the Bible, yep. in the Word. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so that was quite an experience that you had then. Yeah, that was probably the most dramatic miracle because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you get healed and, and the pain just kind of goes away slowly, you know. Mm -hmm. But that day, bang, I, I felt that in my you shoulder. You could feel the heat I in your I could feel shoulder. that in my shoulder, and I knew, I knew I was getting my healing. And that's the Holy Spirit that yeah, was in. Yeah. So it's not like you could say, well, you know, I had gone to the chiropractor that day no. or... You know, I found this, no. you know, kind of like a Ben Gay or, or some kind of a, no. you know, that you could apply in there, but, but this was, that you could feel the healing happening and in that it has happened. And being a farmer, you, you need your body to be well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, you just, You know, I think the Lord gave me that, that strong miracle like that to build my faith, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been healed many times later here. Uh, one story is kind of humorous. I was out going to fix fence up by my cow pasture. Well, can I just interject? So you okay. keep that thought, but what I like what you just said, because I talked about well, how can, you know, I'm sure you're thankful and what a blessing because you know, I've got a brother who's a farmer, and he's had back problems, and in, mm -hmm. in, in how difficult it is. I mean, yeah. I get back problems, but I can, you know, sit in, at my desk and read, and it heals. But I know how much he needs. And so I think, well, a lot of times we pray for God to be doing things out of convenience for us, saying, well, God, I need my back to be well. I need my shoulder to be well. And you healed me. Now I can go on my merry way. But, but what you just said, I think, is so powerful is that it wasn't even so much that, well, no, it's really nice to be able to go and work on the farm with my shoulder well, mm -hmm. but you said it built up my faith. Oh, yeah, yeah. It I, had to do with faith, that your mm -hmm. faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think and God... I think that, was, that yeah. was such a powerful statement because I think a lot of us would be just saying, oh, thank you, God, you healed my shoulder. I can go on my merry way. I can now pitch my baseballs again, and I can jump up into the tractor and... And that's it. But no, you know, that the healing was, that there was a greater purpose for that healing other than just to say, well, now I can yeah. go about my farm work, but it's to yeah. build up and to strengthen my faith. And I just thank the Lord for that statement that you made. Okay, well, let's yeah. go on then now yeah. to the next. Uh, so you've had other uh, healings that have taken place then as, uh, as well. Oh, yeah, uh, just a simple little one. I was out to my cow pasture there, and, and I got an old metal gate that's rusted and it's got holes in it. And I opened the gate, and I didn't know, but some big old bumblebees had made a nest in that gate. Oh, wow. And anyhow, I felt a sting in the, right in the middle of my back. It got me pretty good, and I looked around, and I saw this big old bumblebee, and I thought, well, okay. And I was just walked away. I was going to work, work on my electric fence there, and I just said, Lord, thank you for my healing. I know I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And within a few minutes, it had gone away. And so I finished working on the fence, and I came back, and I didn't touch the gate again, but I just walked by it. And all of a sudden, bang, I felt that sting on my back again in the same spot, the same pain I felt before. And I just knew it was the devil just putting that on me. And I just laughed. I'm going, ha, ha, ha. And just like that, that pain was gone. I just, just mm -hmm. how the devil works, mm -hmm. you know. He just thought he could stick that back on me. I said, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was just one. Uh, another one that just happened a couple years ago, last summer, um, my knee started bothering me. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm jumping off tractors and off the skid loader and back on it. And it just kind of felt like I couldn't trust it, you know? Mm -hmm. Just a, a dull pain in there, but when I jump off the tractor, it just kind of felt like, you know, maybe I can't really trust this knee, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I laugh only because I know so many farmers <laughs> where after a while, like you say, after yeah. how many years of doing this, jumping up and yeah. down yeah. from the tractor, they got a sore knee. Yeah. Okay, go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just had a dull pain in there. And uh, just every day I just say, well, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And, you know, I left it at that. I never take any medicine for it, any painkiller or anything for it. And it was stayed about the same for about two months. And it, it bothered me at night because it has to be kind of careful how I get just in the right position so I could sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that went on and I just kept saying, you know, believing that I'm healed by the stripes of mm -hmm. Jesus. One of these days it's going to be gone. But then one day, it was, it was in September, and a friend of mine stopped in and we were talking some business. We had some farm stuff to do and, okay. and uh, he asked me, just out of the blue, he says, do you have arthritis? And of course, I, just, I said no because I didn't want to you know, the devil can put that on you if you say mm -hmm. you got it. So I said no, but he started describing he was having trouble with his knee. And it was the same symptoms, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, describing what was going on with him. And he says, you know, he said, I got arthritis, you know. And so I didn't say much, and he left. And then I was alone there in the house, and I just got after the devil. And I said, devil, you are not going to lay arthritis on me. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And I just quoted every scripture I knew, mm -hmm. and that was only last year, like I say, so I've, I've gotten pretty strong in my faith. And I think the difference was there, I put a name on it. I called it arthritis. I said, devil, you are not going to lay arthritis on me. Mm -hmm. And within three days, that pain was all gone, and it's been perfect ever since. Is that right? That's, wow. Yep. Yeah, so you've really had miracles, but you're living your life day by day in relationship with the Lord, and... And so you are really claiming the victory. You're, yeah. you're claiming that power that uh, our Lord gives to us. Yeah. Well, Jesus took those stripes, that, that beating. He took that so we could be healed. Mm -hmm. And if we don't claim it, if we don't receive that healing, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of a waste. You know? Right. So he did it for us. He wants us to be healthy. He wants me to be able to do my job. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe he gave me these testimonies so I could be here and share them. I, I think God gives us testimonies yeah. So that we will share them and build up other people's faith. Amen so, to that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that God is, he'll do that, strengthen your faith. But now as you share with, with, every, with, mm. with all of us, then that strength, strengthens our faith and that we too uh, put, you know, that in, you know, put it into practice to be praying and, mm -hmm. and claiming that uh, power, that victory that our Lord gives to us over the, over the devil. Yeah. yeah, and so we look at physical healings. Have you ever experienced any other kinds of miracles? I mean, on the farm, it's, like we say, it's probably miracles every day. But, oh, yeah. You know, but farming is a very dangerous um, uh, occupation, I think. Isn't it just always between, like, farming and mining and going back and forth as being yeah. the most yeah. dangerous yeah. occupation yeah. that there is? And yeah. the littlest things can, can happen that sometimes, you know, can create... Uh, either injury for us or or just you know sometimes we find ourselves in predicaments it's just oh, yeah. unreal just where yeah you know we can find ourselves in a predicament and in god uh, you help us right now you give us a yeah i need your i need your i need you right now oh, yeah. we need god all the time but yeah. but this is really where it's kind of out of my control yeah and sometimes things happen so fast you don't even have time to ask god to help you you know i know a lot of close calls where and after it's done, I just say, well, thank you, Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. But I know, you know, it tells us in Hebrews 1.14 that we have angels watching over us. If we, are, if we are sons of God, if we are going to inherit salvation, we have angels who are here mm -hmm. to serve us, you know. And they see things coming before we do. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know I've been helped many times. Uh, one time in particular, um, just happened a couple years ago, I was helping my brother-in-law chop corn silage. We were filling silo. Okay. And he's got a pretty rough farm and we were up on top of the hill and my job was to pull the wagons in to the silo. And uh, it was the first load of the day and I hooked on and I was going to take it down this pretty steep hill. And I got a check in my spirit from the Holy Spirit that, you know, you shouldn't really go down that hill. Hmm. But I didn't 
didn't uh, obey. I did shift the tractor down. I'm going to take it real slow. I'll be all right. Well, I just started to go on down that hill, and this ravine was covered with grass. Okay. And so my tractor tires didn't dig in, and uh, I started slipping, picking up speed. And I realized, you know, I was out of control. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just said to myself, boy, a, a person could get killed this way. Because I was going down this hill oh, out of yeah. control. My tractor with no cab, no roll bar or anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just said, Jesus, help me. And as soon as I said that, I just felt this calm come over me. Because I knew that Jesus would help me. I just had that faith. I just knew he would. And I had this calm come over. And the next thing I know, I'm uh, down at the bottom of the hill. And the tractor is sitting upright on its wheels. Oh. And I didn't have a scratch on me. And the wagon is sitting upright. It didn't get tipped over. You know, so many things could have happened. Mm -hmm. And I just know those angels were there mm -hmm. protecting. You know, there was some damage to the tongue and to the, the front bolster of the wagon. But uh, it, could have been, it could have been disastrous. But... Uh, a lot of people have lost their life over something oh, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But uh, I just, uh, as soon as I said, help me, Jesus, it just mm -hmm. felt calm. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, I could tell you story after story. Just about every day something happens. Every day. Yeah. Every day just living your life in relationship with the Lord and, mm -hmm. and trusting in the Lord and to know that God is, is real and living. Mm -hmm. His presence is with us always, and you are a testimony of that. Yeah. You know, just how you live your life. And, and so uh, we just want to thank you so much for being on the program today and sharing uh, your, your journey in life, your journey being a faith story. And, and so, Bob, we just uh, thank you and, and pray that you will continue to live your life day by day, trusting in the Lord and, and claiming his promises and, and his strength and power for our lives. So this is... Uh, Bob Rol Rolvis. Rolvis, yeah, I'm yep. sorry. Bob Rolvis, yep. and a good old German name. And so thank you for being with our program today, and God bless all of you for joining us this day as well.